Well, good morning to everyone that has just joined us live. And if you are one of the individuals watching the replay, a big hello to you. Welcome to the first of our PCE webinars for 2024. This time, it's all about thermal graphic surveys, the basics. We are about to start the main presentation. Just for those that have just joined us, if you are looking to pose a question over the course of the webinar, first place I'll point you to is to the chat facility that will run either down the left or the right hand side if you're on a desktop. If you're on a mobile device, you just need to pull up and you'll see the comments box just at the bottom. Alternatively, you can email your question to me at andy at property-care.org. That's andy at property-care.org. Or if you are socially savvy, you can use the native messaging tools on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Now, I do have to say as well that if you are engaging in the chat, um, um, uh, I do have to point out that some of the comments that might get said and also equally as well, potentially some of the views that are presented within this webinar do not necessarily reflect the views of the Property Care Association. That's me just getting the disclaimer out of the well way. Done. But um, I can see, Anthony, we are pretty much bang on nine o'clock. So it looks like it's time to start the main event. So, Anthony... Thermographic surveys and thermographic equipment. Now, I have to say, for me, being the tech geek that I am, this is a webinar I'm personally looking forward to watching. I mean, I love cool gadgets like this, and I suspect for the many listening, if cool gadgets like thermographic equipment can aid them in better diagnostics and investigations, then it's potentially a big hit for them too. Now, I know from my research, thermal imaging equipment is becoming increasingly popular. And in many sectors, that include sectors served by the PCE, such as our damp and waterproofing members, um, they use it in order to aid in moisture diagnostics. However, before many of us jump on, I suppose you could call the thermal graphic wave, what do we need to know? And what are the general obstacles when using thermal graphic diagnostic tools that are not generally obvious or discussed? I suppose over to yourself, Anthony, to explain a little bit more. Thank you very much indeed. The first thing um, about all of this is that you don't need to worry one iota if you understand the basics. There's a bit of a minefield out there, but if you understand the basics, you will have a, a, a pretty good feel of what you need to have for the future. But again, thank you very much, Andy, for that. Um, I'm going to click on my first slide here. Um, it's all new on my side. Here I am. Uh, my name is Anthony Walker. Uh, I am the Managing Director of Thermo Survey. Um, as some of you may have heard, I started off my background uh, in the military. I was with tanks, and that's how I got interested in thermal imaging. But latterly, I, um, like a few members, I'm quite techy, um, and I did an MSC um, looking at damp using thermal imaging. So it will be a reoccurring three, um, theme for some of you. Um, I'm also a qualified um, drone pilot. So hopefully I'll be able to give you an understanding. Now, please remember what we're going to be talking about is the basics and how to get your camera, how to um, uh, uh, what do you need it for? Because everybody wants to jump in, get this lovely bit of kit and potentially it gets left in a drawer because you don't know how to use it properly. Sorry, one doesn't. I'm not that politically correct sometimes. Anyway, so cracking on. Um, what we're going to have, a, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look um, at thermography, a potted history. I'm, I'm going to sort of trundle through that because some people will find it quite interesting, um, but the main guts will be later on. We're going to look at why use thermography. What, you know, what's the point in buildings? We are looking at buildings here. What is the point of thermography? Um, I am going to teach some people to suck eggs, but this is for everybody, all right? So some people have not even understood uh, or not even understood um, where to get thermal imaging equipment from. They don't understand the technology very much. And so that's absolutely great. So I, I make no bones about it. It's a basic introduction. We'll then go on to uh, thermography in the built environment. Um, 
And then the equipment minefield. All of these shocking words like minefield and watch it and this and the other, no problems because I shall lead you rather like a royal engineer going straight through a minefield. Uh, no problems. Then we'll look at uh, survey considerations. Now, getting the equipment and surveying can be chicken and egg. They can go from one side to the other because do you need to think, oh, I need to get the kit? Or do you need to say, right, um, I've got to do the survey first. Let What kit do I need? Crack on to issues that you will encounter, purchasing considerations. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about Jones and UAVs because people get quite excited about that at the end. Um, so that's how I will uh, I, I will be doing this. Now, as I, as Andy said, you know, chuck any any information that you want uh, on, on the chat, or if you want to direct mail Andy or myself, please do. I've got my details at the end of this presentation. I love it when people actually get back to me and I'm more than happy to help all the way through. Right, take a breather, go on to the next slide. Here we go, the potted history. Everybody starts off with this fantastic schematic. It's brilliant. It shows you exactly what, how it all came about. Effectively, here is the um, electromagnetic spectrum, um, and you can see the visible region of light. Um, that's, you know, with the going from red to blue, and that is the area of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see in. Um, and in 1800s, a chap called Herschel, William Herschel, um, he was doing a lot of physics work uh, in Britain, and he was trying to identify which reg reason, uh, regions of light gave off um, the best heat. So, you know, if so, you put a thermometer under a red light and then put it under a blue light and he wanted to see how much heat there was. But all of a sudden he found out that if he pushed off towards the infrared, towards the red end, right across towards that red end, he found out that there was a serious amount of heat coming from that area, which we couldn't see. That is the infrared region. And I won't go into any more detail than that. But that was, you know, a, a brief, brief history. And what you can do now is... Um, in order to identify that nowadays, you um, and to, to basically pick it up is to have a little um, a dish of, um, of metal that's darkened. Um, as soon as the heat lands on it, it will create an electrical impulse. And so that's how you could do the censoring of it. The potted history, like every single bit of technology, it all has been driven by the um, by the military. Um, Started off really in the 1930s, Second World War. In fact, before then, the first equipment that they was that was really invented was done by a, um, a Hungarian in Britain, and that was in the 1930s. But the Second World War, they really started to identify that they could use infrared to to, to look at heat sources on enemy vehicles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and this uh, diversified very much into the Cold War. Um, and on the left-hand picture, you can see some of the. Sorry, this. On the right-hand picture, we'll do that first. In the Cold War, there's um, they started putting uh, IR cameras on the front of uh, missiles. And this was, I think, during the 1950s. This picture on the right, 1950s. On the left, they started to do even more diversification. Um, and they were still looking at the military uh, aspects of it. And then finally, towards the end of the Cold War, we started to look at... Um, the large areas of the diversification. Uh, elect there's, uh, <laughs> sorry, I've just gone and seen, is that just me or is it a bit of a Piers Morgan look? Yes, unfortunately, I'll take my glasses off. Sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> I can see that on the right-hand side. I won't get distracted, but I try not to have anything to do with him. Um, I'm less radical. Diversification, you've got the, um, you've got com companies like uh, Fleur, Raytheon, people like that. They were looking at, uh, electrical and mechanical applications for that. So that's your really quick potted history. Um, now we're starting to get into it. What and wh why thermography? You know, what, what is it all? Now I've got two pictures here. The first picture is that what you would see. Um, and one second, I'm just clicking on here. There we are. On the left-hand side, what you would see is a wall. On the right-hand side, what a thermal imaging is. Now, um, a, a picture of a wall. Now, for those people that haven't looked at thermal imaging uh, properly, you can see here that the cold areas, uh, there's a, 
uh, are, are in the dark blue and the warmer areas are in the uh, the hotter colors like the whites and the yellows so the right hand picture will show that it is cooler on the on the bottom than on the top um so basically what we're looking at is what is happening behind that wall on the left hand side what what's happening um we can't see through it but we know that there's something going on is there damp behind there is there heat loss is there trunking for an electrical or a bit of a plumbing or something like that we can't see it go to the right hand side straight away you're able to see it um, and we get an idea of what's going on so that's how you can support your theories you come up with a theory say look is that damp is that why is it cold what's what is it come up with it and it will come up and it will um, support your theories on how that all works um, the next on the next side the enhanced situ situational awareness we can understand what the what the building's doing we can start to have a feel for that building we can start looking at that building and we can start looking at other buildings as well do they all get damp at that if you've got a number of properties of, of a similar design are they all looking at that uh, that damp bit um, and do they all have the same uh, problem with that damp which you can see here um, and then finally, you can communicate the findings, which are very, very easy. Communicating the findings, what you're doing is uh, you can make a report. You can talk to somebody about the individual uh, images. You can pass that or even video. You can show video or you can just verbalize it and you can chat over a cup of tea and say, bloody hell, look at that. Excuse my language. Look at that. There's a bit of damp. OK, so that's how we are. Uh, we use thermography. Going back a little bit in history again, because I like these pictures and I, I don't apologize for them. These pictures are uh, historical. This is a 1960s uh, AGA cooled imager. Um, and you can see the guy on the left hand side trying to work out whether he's got damp or cold or something like that. Now, that costs the same as the building. That's how expensive it is. Um, and it's, it would be very useful to do, but it would only last for a couple of minutes. And as I said, it would cost more than the building itself. OK. Right. I like, I don't know about you guys, but I, I certainly like a little bit of Clint Eastwood. Uh, the Good, Bad and the Ugly, one of my favorite films. So I've decided to have the next few slides, Good, the Bad and the Ugly, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of how it's going. <clears throat> um, and also, it. it it merges it a little bit better. I had to have something more interesting than a, a, a normal slideshow. Right. Imager lifespan is dramatically increased. That's the first thing. That's the first bit of good news. All right. Originally, there was a one pixel detector and that would last approximately 72 hours before that bit of metal would, would burn, would explode. That would be it. That's why it's so expensive. So now we've got more and more technology the lifespan has now massively increased. So we have an infinite, effectively, lifespan. Um, and it's only, the, it's only effectively the electric batteries that are going to be stopping you from doing your surveying. The next thing is that um, the cost has come down. One of my colleagues who uh, was helping me with this, he started with a £45,000 camera um, only 10, 15 years ago. And then he had to pay on top of that £25,000, which is a hell of a lot. That's £25,000 was pure software. All right. Um, and not only that, they, the the cameras themselves, the, the quality was pretty poor. And, and the reason why I've got my hands up here looking particularly good at all of you is that when you're doing a handheld, uh, you've got a handheld camera, your hands are going to start to affect the heat that, that the detector inside will pick up. So immediately you get disturbed images. Hence the reason in, the, in those old pictures that they were on tri tripods and also they were really, really heavy. So that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, and finally, uh, in, the, in, the built, in the built up area, um, the, the market is, people are understanding it. People get the idea of it. They, they, can, they feel a lot better. There's a, there's a better understanding. There's multiple markets. There are multiple mar segments within one market. For instance, if you're looking at the building sector, you've got people who are looking at HVAC. You're looking at people who are looking at damp and heat. You're looking at people, electricians and plumbers. And so, so people are now starting to understand it. And it is an extremely useful tool. Um, on that very first picture, you saw the damp. 
just like that. How do you know it's the damp is another question. And we're going to get on back towards that. OK, so. I'm trying to click on my bit. Oh, there we are. The bad news. OK, Lee Van Cleef. Um, he's I think it's Lee Van Cleef. Anyway, yes. Um, the bad news. All right. More accessible technology, but it's easier to misinterpret. All right. There are lots and lots of cameras there. Prices are going down. There are a lot of cameras that are a little bit on the, um, should we say, not, have to be very careful, not as um, accurate as you would like. And therefore, there can be a lot of misinterpretation. You have to be careful what cameras you buy. OK. The other thing is, is the dabbling area. And you're going, well, hang on, I've got this amazing bit of kit. Um, it's brilliant. I've pressed these buttons and I've got pictures, this, that and the other. And then the problem is, is that you start dabbling with it and then you you're not you you haven't done the training you're not familiar with it enough and it goes into your drawer and then there's 10,000 pounds of equipment in your drawer left to rot um and that is a big problem that you find in a in quite a few companies that the poor camera just goes in there and especially if somebody moves on and gets a promotion or something it's just left there and that asset is it, it could be used massively finally Available training seems to be heavily skewered. And what I'm saying about that is that um, looking at the technological things, there's a company in the, the there's an organization at the end that uh, I'll give you the website to called BINT, for instance, which is the British Institute of Non-Destructive Testing. Now, that is a um, it is a really, really good association, but it's quite technically um, sort of it's a, it is a technical institute uh, association. And uh, the thermal imaging guys, we sort of are part of that. Um, and what they do is they do certification. So there's a lot of uh, sort of technical skewing, not so much stuff for builders out there and uh, building surveyors. So this is why what we try and do, uh, and the PCA, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to go and do more workshops, more te more um, sort of the these sort of webinars, things like that, to help you guys uh, to look through the minefield as such, okay? Hence, Anytime you want to talk to me afterwards, whatever, give me a call. Doesn't really matter. I wanted to promote this far more. And so does the PCA, and especially when it comes down to damp. And we'll talk about that later on. The ugly. Um, <clears throat> as individuals are aware, it can be weaponized. Genuine thermographic surveys are being seen in litigation cases. Weaponization of thermal imaging cameras. They are cheaper. People can use them. And people who don't have the technological um, training will take a picture and they will say it's rubbish. And I'll, I can give an example of this. I have to be quite careful. Uh, I have certainly seen in the news a picture of a house where um, there was a CEO of a large company and they said, goodness gracious, look at this thermal imaging. It's bright red. The guy doesn't care about how much energy he's using. The, it's right, the, the house is bright red, heat coming flying out left, right and center. And then it was taken from the road and there was a lamppost and that lamppost was the is a concrete lamppost same color as the house what had happened they had weaponized that image they hadn't put a span uh the, the heat span on the left hand side there we are just on, on on the side so you had no idea so the house was the same temperature as the concrete on the outside and uh, on a cold day so you've got to be very careful about that and it goes down to unscrupulous mimicking claims that are exploiting the knowledge gaps what we're saying here is that um you have to have an understanding of the, of the techn uh, technology okay and what features you you need to make the equipment correct and the picture correct okay what if you don't do that there's going to be a knowledge gap and then you will therefore pass on that when i'm saying you i mean one can pass on that gap which can make costly errors to future not only that you could one can also scare clients who have no understanding and you might see something and they might end up trying to try to um sort of mitigate against that put put in sort of costly repairs or something and it doesn't need to be done so you have to be extremely careful about that overall these are increasing in scope and regularity and you see that on the on the slide so just be confident. I mean, the, the easiest thing is if you've got a kit picture, you've taken a picture, it works really well. You'll see everything in truth um, as long as you can understand what you are seeing. That's all. 
and nobody can bluff you on that. It's like normal visual cameras uh, taking a picture, going onto the internet and photocopying, uh, photoshopping it. It's the same sort of thing. If you've got the original picture with all the data points on it, the raw data, it will help massively and you understand what's happened. Okay. Finally, the false news. We've talked a little bit about it and I've gone ahead of myself because I'm like that. And I don't have a picture of any more apart from the first three uh, guys in the good, bad and the ugly. The false news, a picture never lies. Yes, it does. I've just spoken to you very briefly about the um, uh, about pictures on Photoshop and things like that. It, it never lies. Of course it does. You can do anything you like. Even if it is false, the image is convincing, uh, convincing and we can't argue with it. Well, yes, if you if you guys have got the training or you know people like me who's got the training and you say, well, not quite sure about that, you can argue with it. You can say, hang on, I need to get the, the raw image. OK. People talk about the risk of escalation is not worth potential cost. Now, it doesn't really matter. I mean, God, blimey, I've got I could just show you I've got enough. So here we go. A picture of thermal imaging bit of actually that's that's a bit of thermal imaging there. Give me a picture. Five pound, you know, one pound fifty, five pound. It doesn't matter. It's the cheapest chips. We can see what it is and you can see it yourself. It's not it's not massive science. The science is in the camera. Your interpretation is is it is pretty easy and we are not equipped to push back yes you are you are going to be empowered to go and do it yourself piece of cake all right um so although there's a lot of people a lot of um oh dear what ifs and buts and this that and the other you easily can do it um you just have got to go through the most basic sort of basic training or basic understanding with a with a camera that's appropriate to you and we'll go on to that in more detail and um, you won't have a problem okay and this is why we're doing all these sorts of courses and where you know we will do as much as we can and the pca will do as much as we can the thermo survey to help you guys to make sure that it's all correct the equipment minefield i love this picture all right we're going to start off on the the equipment minefield. Here are two pictures. The one on the left is a picture of um, it's a picture of a mug. Um, where is my mug? I don't know. I, I, oh, I'm, I'm using it here, so I won't use it. Um, it's a one sixty by one twenty. Uh, the one on the right is a three twenty by two forty. If you look below, what that means? These are the pixels. The amount of pixels along the top and the sides. Um, how many pixels there are, and therefore they're calibrated data points. Each of these pixels is a temperature. So on the left-hand side, we've got nine, over 19,000. On the right-hand side, almost 77,000 pixels. So immediately you can see that the, re the resolution is a lot clearer. That doesn't mean that the one on the right is not fit for purpose, okay? Um, what basically it is, it's it's a very, very good starting point. What do you need the camera for? If you are going to do a lot of plumbing work, I would argue that the one on the left hand side is going to be useful because you don't need to have the granularity, the nuances that you need on the right hand side for, let's say, doing something else. Uh, being a builder looking at insulation, you just want to have a hotspot. Is there a leak behind a wall? That sort of thing. That's what you're finding. And you're not writing any reports. You're not right. You're not doing anything complicated. So all you need to do is have that sort of camera. And it's perfectly acceptable. It's great for those sorts of jobs. Also, they're pretty robust and they fit in a toolkit and you can go around. On the right hand side, that is that's what we would be using as consultants. Um, and as consultants um, and also as, as a sort of the, the, the more general use camera, these are more expensive, of course, so they've got more kit on them um, and then more functionality. They also used a 320 by 240 for those in, individuals that are interested. Uh, we use these for the sort of the bottom end of any litigious sort of um, process that's going on. Uh, because the 160 by the 120s, they're a little bit too vague for uh, for use in uh, litigious cases. So what we do is we we tend to use these ones and going above. But additionally, 
when I was talking about functionality, going back to that, you've got your you've got your pixels, but do you need a visual camera as well? Because the one on the right will take a visual and a thermal together. The one on the left generally won't do that. Um, also, do you need Wi-Fi, Bluetooth? I mean, they're all wired up with Bluetooth, and we'll talk about humidity meters and things like that later on. They're all wired up so that they take the data, they put it on the, the raw image, and then you've got it forevermore. It gives greater accuracy. Um, also, temperature ranges. The temperature ranges on the right-hand side are much broader, but that's not too relevant um, in, in terms of buildings, uh, unless you've got uh, sort of really crazy temperatures in uh, electrical issues and things like that. But also, coming back to damp, dew points we can use on the right hand side we can use meet we can use a dew point and we can set a dew point and then you can come up it, it, it fluoresces areas that it considers damp not necessarily damp but it will give you a rare it will give you enough of an idea of what's going on and we'll talk about that more and also same with alarms if something's too hot things like that right whizzing along the sheer variety of equipment. Here we go. Um, do you see these, uh, doo -doo -doo, about the second from the left um, at the top? These are the, the smaller cameras that a lot of people um, are using. They're very, very cheap now. Uh, we're looking, you know, in the, in the hundreds of pounds. Um, and what people do is they, they attach them to their iPhones and they take pictures and things like that. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, they're very, very basic. Uh, some people, a lot of people who don't know how to use thermal imaging, um, they they use them and they try and prove points. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on that side. Um, the middle of the road, good good cameras are the ones that, that basically you've got a handle, like uh, directly bottom center, those sorts of things. That they, they a lot of building surveyors have those. Um, and then on the right hand side, the more expensive ones, which a lot of consultants have, which have more functionality. But Horses for courses, as for goodness sake, don't go and get the most expensive camera just because it looks great. Um, it's it, it's not. It's we've all been down that route when we've when we were kids buying buying Wi-Fi hi-fis and things like that when we had gramophone records, granddad and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't work. Um, all right, uh, I won't go into too much details, but basically you've got a lot of com companies called Fleur. Some of you know Testo. A lot of Chinese ones are coming in. Um, the, and you need to remember also the software. What software are you going to do? Are you going to be doing reporting? If you need to do reporting, you might need certain cameras and you need certain formats in order to do that. And what sort of software? Take that into consideration. OK, I'm rattling along merrily because I'm always noticing time is never on my side. Survey considerations. Now we're coming into the guts of it all. I'll, I'll talk about the, um, the pictures in a second. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just run through the, the planning your surveys. A lot of you know the PPPPPPPs. Um, my army days are slightly different, but this one I will call prior planning and preparation prevents positively poor performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so plan your survey. What are you trying to achieve? The main, the main, main issues that you have and limitations are time and climate. And I will go through these. Um, in a little bit of detail. First of all, time, okay? Time, do you want to do it at night or during the day? The benefits of doing thermal imaging at night, if you're going outside, is the fact is that you don't have solar radiation warming your walls, giving you a wrong a, a wrong figure, okay? Um, if you want to do it during the daytime, you might want to do that because you might have a camera that has a visual picture as well and you can therefore use the visual and thermal together in order to go and get to use it as a reference um so the best days would be a, a sort of a very gray drab day that sort of thing also remember that you want to do it when the temperature is cold so winter is a good time um so that you can get the differences in in temperature and and that and also there's damp issues as well um and that's going on to the climate issues um with climate the most important things here are the temperatures you've got. If you've got fog or, or cloud and moisture, they will go for it. Um, and again, uh, uh, and the wind, the wind can actually do something as well. So you basically need to think of all of these things um, in terms of why are you buying your camera? Why are you doing thermal imaging? So keep an eye on that. Exception or full reporting. Um, 
I do exception personally, but for reporting, we'll start off on that. You go through a building and you take pictures of absolutely every single part of the building. And that's very good for benchmarking because from then on, as I mentioned prior uh, you know, a few slides ago, what you can do is you can um, you can compare and contrast with half a year ago or a year, most likely a year ago, because you've looked at your time and your climate and you can see if there's been any differences. So that's full reporting. Not many people do that. Most people will be looking at exceptions. So you will go through the whole of a building or a structure and you will look around and you will identify um, areas there are that there is an anomaly um, and always keep it in your mind as an anomaly because thermal imaging really picks out those changes that are outside the norm and then you with your experiences are able to identify whether it's damp whether it's you know, what the problem is okay so that's that's on the reporting side and the purpose uh, and the remit okay is that um why are you doing this are you just going to look at damp are you just going to look at electrics are you going to look at plumbing are you going whatever you're going to look at and um, what are you actually trying to achieve okay um because you don't want to waste time um and therefore money it all comes down to the time and the money as you know so we've talked about that really really sort of quite dry in the center area but let's have a look at, at some of the pictures on the left hand side i've taken i've taken two pictures here uh, on the, as you can see on the right hand side of each of those pictures you'll see a uh, you'll see a um um a scale that scale is always very important and you always know that it's a decent picture there because you can get reference points on it on the left hand top left hand side you've got these little spot um temperatures as well 12.3 and 18.8 degrees centigrade I, I just left those on. You don't need to have those on. And that also sort of helps out, uh, gives you an idea of, of, of the feel of the um, the image. So on the top, you can see there's a ceiling. And that ceiling, there are cold elements in that ceiling. Therefore, it shows reduced insulation. OK, we assume. OK, we need to look into more detail. But that, I know that because I took a picture but that's of that side on the bottom. Uh, on the other side is looking straight down on the floor, underfloor heating. It's a wet system um, and you can see it. Now, reference the, the plumbing side. Uh, for instance, if you had the smaller cameras, you'd be able to spot a nice little plume of white, hot, inverted commas, yellow, hot water coming out of there. And straight away, you could spot where the, the, uh, where the leak is. OK, right. On the right hand side of the pictures, there is the thing that I use the most for damp. It's a uh, it's a humidity meter uh, in this case. Now you've got lots of different types, um, but quite quite good. Some people just Bluetooth it, and you can Bluetooth it with your camera, and it will take a uh, when you take the image, it'll take the uh, the the atmospheric humidity or the humidity if you're going to be um, physically touching the wall or whatever. It'll take that humidity as well. So uh, you can see what the humidity of the wall is, or the atmosphere, or other data sets that you need to put in. It's quite useful because the more data you have on that picture, the better understanding you have. OK. Ah, oh, my favorite. I am a bit of a geek um, and damp never, ever fails to amaze me in terms of trying to to catch me out. Here we go. Just so I can show you that. I just took a picture of it. Yet another. I've got lots of these. Don't bother reading any of these. OK, just go through this. The government is currently tightening rules on damp buildings. This is two days ago, three days ago, these newspapers, all right? We know the horrible, horrible situation that is going on in terms of some of the houses uh, in this country. Um, I have seen it. I've worked with quite a few um, housing associations uh, on their on, on all their portfolios. Some have been spurious. Uh, others have been really bad. Um, and... It's it is it's very very important. Okay, um, so <clears throat> hence I'm quite interested in it. The I won't go into any more details because you guys really do know uh, what the situation is. But what is important is for you to understand one to understand the source and the type of damp. All right, the source I have got into three different areas myself: external sources, internal structural sources. And I'll call them social sources. I think we all know those. Easiest one, 
social sources is uh, is purely the inhabitants and how they interact with the uh, the building themselves. Internal sources on the building could be internal leaks um, um, and that side of life and sort of ventilation if ventilation isn't working. Um, and the final one is external. OK, now I mentioned the dew point and camera settings. I'll go through all of the all of these pictures and in, uh, uh, in, in turn, we can go through the, the first one on the top left. What I've done here is I've, I've put a dew point. I've set a dew point um, onto the floor of a of a building that had a leak um, uh, to find out where the dampness is. So in this case, you've got the dew point has, has been achieved. Uh, there is damp where it's green, bright green, but it's also cold. You can see where the, the cold has sort of moved out, but it hasn't triggered the, the dew point alarm. It's a standard alarm that you do. OK, now, if you look at this one below it, it's a flat building. Um, it's irradiating massive amounts of uh, heat, white heat, uh, yellow heat. Um, and that's because it was recently in the sun. Um, and it had it had leaks anyway, and you can see the dark colour on the roof is actually where water has pooled and is is, is created. They, they, were just, they were saying that we can't find a leak. There's a leak somewhere in the building, in the roof, um, and so you've, it was constantly damp. That area is constantly damp. The rest is dry and radiating it. That, that bit's damp. So that is immediately the area where we would be identifying damp from. If you have a look going round uh, anti-clockwise to where the arrow is, that was a uh, that's a very interesting situation because the, the whole wall was was damp, and um, we all thought that the damp was just coming up um, equally rising damp through the uh, through the wall, but in fact the damp had really started coming through the ducting from that um, that little power point or that little electrical point. Um, and so it had, it had come from there and it had spread out. So immediately you, you're thinking, my word, I can map the movement of uh, the, 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 the overall movement of, the, um, of the, the moisture. So in this case, you could use like in the right hand picture, you can see the damp in the, that bottom right hand picture. You can see me using the moisture meter and I can tell the percentages of damp as I go as it goes darker and darker. And you could you could actually map where it comes from. The final one at the top right hand side is an amalgamation. Remember, I told you about doing um, visual and thermal, putting visual and thermal together. And you can create in this case, somebody had a, a window that they thought was leaking. It's, um, it's a rhomboid window, which is interesting. But uh, the leak was actually outside. It was a uh, poor pointing. And so you can see you can track where the water's coming through. And then it just goes down through a little gap in the top of the window frame. So there you go. Rattling through. OK. How do you interpret it, interpret the images? Well, on the right hand side, there's an image which I would consider absolutely wonderful. It's basically I took a picture. Um, this housing association they were looking at doing retrofit external cladding, and they wanted to have a before and after. And this is the before picture. So you can see that the dark areas and the light the light areas, of course, is when the heat is coming out of the building, and the dark areas are where it's not coming out. You can see on the right hand side there's a span, uh, the, the, there's a there's a scale, and you you generally got an idea. If you have a look on the um, Left hand side, you can see that there's um, there's a spurious 7.3 on the top left hand side. Uh, there's no scale. You don't know if that's going to be down. You, you, you have no understanding of, of what it is, um, that picture. So that could be anything. Um, damp, it can be cold, anything. Same as below. You don't know whether that's damp water that's coming up or coming down. Um, or it could be air or it could be a leak from the window. But in this case, it's actually normal convection air. Um, but I, I put that specially so that you can you have there are so many different things that you can get wrong by looking at that picture. OK, so as we mentioned before, weaponizing thermography, um, you, you can do that. It's very difficult to do on the right hand side, but do on the left hand side. You, I can play I can play silly games with that all the time. So if you have a picture on the right hand side with all the raw data, you can defend your conclusions. You can say this is absolutely brilliant. You know, you can uh, it's you could. You can come out and say that can go all the way to court and I will be that there's nothing that can 
that can possibly go wrong, he says with a wry smile. Finally, managing a survey portfolio. Again, we were talking about it. It's brilliant for benchmarking. I mentioned it briefly before. You take your pictures and you got all the information and you have a lovely portfolio and then you manage your portfolio and we can help you manage your portfolios very easily um, you know you just give us a call and we can we can talk and, and work things out um, but it's a fantastic method not only so you can do visual and you can do thermal if you've got the cameras the right the right camera at the same time um, very very good and you can see preventative maintenance and how your maintenance programs go on fantastic and so we do that quite a bit whipping along considerations this is a little slide that I wanted to, I'm not gonna go into any detail with this because this is what you would be doing when you're starting to actually learn a little bit more about thermal imaging, getting correct pictures and all that sort of thing you are. Um, the things you will learn about is focus, range and composition. Obvious, you've got a camera, it's gotta be in focus. Range, you've gotta have the right thermal range. It's rather like you putting your settings on your camera and it's in the dark and you can't see anything. And the other one is composition. It's really embarrassing if you take a picture of a building and you get back into the office and it's only half a building that can't be done can't be sorted out by a computer everything else really can but it's beneficial if you look at settings you need to make sure your settings on the camera you can do it back in base camp but you can do it on your you should do it on your camera and this one's emissivity and that's basically that's an example emissivity for those people that don't is merely it's merely the energy coming out of a uh, coming out of a body okay so that's the heat that you're going to be receiving um, and finally, palette. This is quite an interesting picture that I took. I put two different palettes on it, the same picture. Um, so the left-hand palette I would normally use for, as you can see, I normally use it for buildings. And here you can see the um, the cold um, between the battens, the, the sort of lack of insulation between the battens because it's cold. And that's what I'm concentrating. On the right-hand side, though, it doesn't look so easy to see, but there's an awful lot of red just underneath the sill. And you might be looking at some other reason why that's red. Um, and so Horses for courses for your palate, okay? Pause, nice little pause. Finally, what is your goal? You know, what are you trying to achieve? Why are you doing it? You know, what is the reason that you're doing it? Where are you doing it? I've noticed from the chats, people are all over the place. If you're gonna be doing, if you're a surveyor, you're going to be going north, south, east, west. What are the money? How's the money going to, to work when are you doing it doing it winter all year round because you can do it all year round and who who's your who are you doing it for is it internal external and therefore it comes down to the additional budgets if you're going to be doing a lot of travel traveling okay that's the sort of thing that you need to think about what sort of cameras are you going to be needing with their software because is it compatible are you going to be using lots and lots of cameras or a few cameras are you going to have it and we've got to the bottom line in-house or a contractor because do you need more people or don't you, okay? So that's, or do you, do you need a contractor? It's entirely up to you. Looking at the pictures, as I always finish, left-hand side, you've got a lovely window pane, uh, window with different panes of different quality glasses, okay? At the bottom, you've got a combined image, visual and thermal, of a hot water pipe with a leak, because that leak is, a little bit of heat is coming out. That was too, that's concrete, and that was, uh, da -da 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 -da, that was about, yeah, that's about a foot and a half foot and a half down, we identified that. And on the top right hand side, you can see leaking guttering is gently uh, eroding away around the, um, the window. Okay, finally, the evolution of drones. Um, I do a lot of droning. I did a lot of droning, less so now because of uh, legislation. It's, it's a bit of a nause, I must say, but that's the way it goes. It's complicated. So briefly going through the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, first of all, if you've got your building, and you want to take pictures high up and roofs, you've got the danger levels, okay? You've got scaffolding. So immediately you're looking at the advantages. You don't have to have scaffolding. It's less dangerous. You don't have to have training at height. You don't have to have all that self health and safety. Cherry pickers and the prices attached to all of them. And again, you do have le it's less time. So you, you can just basically whiz up, take the picture and come down. Theoretically, theoretically. The disadvantages are, Potentially, it could be pricey, dependent on what you're going to be doing. You've got to have certification. There's legislation. There are legal res uh, restrictions. Uh, there's a lot of things in built-up areas of putting these things up. A total nightmare. Therefore, would you want to get one of these things yourself at great expense? Or do you want to just go and hire 
somebody to go and do it for you. All right. So these are the things because generally to, for me to do a survey, it will take me a day just to do the planning of a survey to do one building in a built up area. It's it's complicated. So here we have some pictures on the left hand side. As you can see, my drone has got um, the drone we use. It's got two cameras, thermal and visual. So you've got two images. Uh, and so I can have a look at the, the, the visual quality of the roof and thermally the quality of the roof. Um, and there you have it. OK. So very briefly, recap, recapping, you know all about the lovely um, electromagnetic spectrum and uh, Herschel. You know why we use thermography. It gives us an it gives us an extra set of eyes to be able to see things that we can't really see, and it's very useful. We've understood about in the building environment. We can understand how it fits in thermography. We know how many various bits of kit you can have and how to get the right bit of kit. We've looked at once you've got the kit, how to do the survey. You've got to be able to do the survey correctly. We've looked at the issues that you can, can encounter, you will encounter some of the issues. We've looked at more pur purchasing as considerations. And finally, we've looked at very briefly drones and the surveys that go on with those, uh, with, the, with the droning. Okay. So this is additional information, really, really exciting. I knew you would love this because in August, 2023, finally, we got an ISO and that's the first thing up there that's a new iso so if you want to go and get for however many millions of francs they want to sell you that that's the new one uh, and also the old one which is the 80 uh, 1983 iso standard um that has been going on for a long time and that's really for reporting and that's the one that most of us all use for reporting um at the moment at the bottom is my website the company's website bint as i told you the british institute of non-destructive testing is a useful um organization and just for cameras and things past thermal okay um remember very briefly this is how you can contact me i'm i'm basically available to any of you guys you can chat to me you can be in, in touch email direct message me um or or talk to any of the guys within the company uh, we're all here to help you we are going to be providing an awful lot of uh, information for all of you guys in terms of workshops, specialist workshops, dependent on how, my, how many people are interested in various elements, you know, legislative work or electrical work, or whatever. Just talk to us and we can create something. I'm being quite quick now because I'm looking at the time. Um, and I would like to say thank you very, very much indeed. OK, oh, it's been pushed on. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And it took far shorter than I thought. And I could talk I can talk forever. Sorry, Andy. No, no, that's, that's not a problem, Anthony. Not a problem. But no, here, firstly, really. a big, big thank you for sharing your knowledge there. Hopefully the audience agrees. Really insightful and a really engaging presentation. Um, however, I will say this, though. I do think you have missed your calling on life. Um, it seems that you should be a stunt double for Piers Morgan. I know. It's really worrying, I must say. <laughs> Uh, the amount of people have said that to me, and whether you like you like him or you hate him, it's really dodge. I can tell you now, and I, I have to keep my mouth shut because, yeah, <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> controversial. So I will. Yeah, I, I must admit, I did have a little bit of a secret chuckle when I first saw the comments come up. I so did I. Guys, for the, the I first one to say, I'm not you were bang on. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I can't even remember who the lovely lady was. Was it a lady? I can't remember, but it was a long time ago. I'm now putting on chat because I was. Everyone was so excited about. Uh, well, well, certainly for myself. Like just before we go on to questions, I mean. Um, I mean, for me, the key takeaway was the right camera really depends on the circumstances that you're, uh, that you're going to use it for. Great news is, though, that the market for cameras seems to be expanding. But if I steal a line almost from the Transformers film that I was watching last night, there's a bit more to learn than meets the eye to a certain degree. Uh, would that be fair to summarise? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's out there, is <laughs> I love this idea. He, he, I don't know who it was. One of the other guys started talking about minefields. I'm just going, yeah, actually, yeah, it is. It's, it is, it's, a, it is a bit of a, a situation, but who knows? Well, here I'm going to hit you because I'm, I'm conscious of time, uh, and we are running a little bit behind, folks. One thing I would say is, if you do have a question, now is the opportunity to hit 
to us with that question, um, you can either email me at andy at property-care.org or you can use the chat facility. If you're watching the recording, you can just again use my email address and I will pass that question on to Anthony, who will hopefully be able to get back to you. But here, I'm going to start off with what seems to be the most popular question that's been asked both by email, social media, and also on the chat. Now, I am paraphrasing this question because it has come from several different individuals. So thank you, George. Thank you, David. Um, thank you, Ellen, as well. And uh, I think there's been one or two others, but it's really about the equipment itself. Now, um, as I said, I'm going to put this in my own words, but in terms of thermographic cameras, um, what would you recommend based on certain different scenarios? So if you were a basic user, just such as a, a building surveyor or a charter surveyor, looking for just potential issues, what would you recommend? If you were a medium user, such as a specialist, i.e. Uh, uh, maybe one of our members, um, PC members specialising in dam, or maybe even a heating specialist, what would you recommend to help them diagnose uh, and support their investigations and findings? And finally, for a high-end user, someone that really wants to specialise, and thermal graphic cameras and use it extensively and be seen as a USP, what would you recommend? So that's a basic user, medium user, and a high-end user. What would be your recommended cameras? I'm going to, um, as you can hear, I'm, I'm just fiddling around because what I don't want to do is I don't want to start saying, yeah, you've got to get yourself a Fleur or a Testo or one of these things because, quite mm. honestly, I'll get slapped on the head quite happily and quite <laughs> rightly too, um, and that's really annoying. I'm mm. actually going to mm. flick around. Um, to know that, but if you do, 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 if you if you guys remember the um the, the that that slide with the plethora of uh, cameras, um, most of the, the the surveyors. I'm not going to, to to go into models and stuff, but I will go to models. And if you want to talk to me directly, I can go into more detail. I you know I'm sure you can understand. But those handheld cameras that that sort of right angle cameras that you saw in the middle of the picture. Mm. Most building surveyors use that for mid-range cameras, okay? Um, I was actually, believe it or not, I'm just trying to flick out onto, because I was going to get the latest updates for the for the prices and stuff on, on online. But as usual, technology don't, doesn't... Don't worry about pricing anything like that. Just just from your personal experience, oh, okay, what no. recommend then... cameras are, are basic user, medium user, and a extent... Right. You, stay, you stay there. I'll show you my camera, because... These are the cameras at the top end, but smaller. So I like doing this. It's so much better being able to sort of, okay, you know this sort of camera, okay? These are the cameras that the consultants use top end, okay? They, uh, you have a smaller version of this, um, and that is probably going to be about 7,000 pounds in the area of that, a smaller version of this. That's the 320 um, type of camera, okay? So that's your top end user. So if you yeah, really want to be a specialist, end. yeah. So basically, yeah. let's say top end, are you looking at above ten grand? But you can get to the you know seven grand for the ones that you saw that really picture, nice picture of the um, uh, mm. of, of the mug. Okay. Or isolation. So so right, that, that's probably beyond most people's budget. Yeah. I mean, what would no you end. recommend for um, someone that just wants to identify issues and someone that would that's a specialist? Let's say so uh, no end good. is the one that's uh, that you, you can uh, you saw with the pixels and stuff, and that's mm. going to be a, a, a few hundred to a few thousands, very very few thousands. That's sort of the amount of money that you're doing, and then in the middle you've you've got you've probably got the low thousand three thousand that sort of thing two thousand one thousand. They all they all change. It depends on how much mm. functionality they are. So basically, what I would do is between the I, for most of the people here, I'd be looking at the mid range of a few thousand and then that will give you something something not like that it'll, it'll, but it's the same believe it or not it's actually the same detectors and stuff inside that less mm. functionality um but most important look at i would say look at the 320 by the 240 pixels for the general people uh who who need that that breadth of camera and uh you could for for the plumbers and stuff you can go down to the lower uh to the lower uh, type 
work if you're just doing that. Now, if that helps, um, but if you want to get hold of me in more detail, then I can be a little bit more, um, I can talk about it in more detail, shall we say. Yeah, I, um, to, I know you're talking about the kind of pixelations and the 320s. Is there, just just for the, the non-techies that are out there, especially for myself, because I, I, I wouldn't quite know or maybe remember that, is there any particular brands or models that you could just very quickly give a nod towards? Yeah, I do. the people? two main brands are Fleur and Testo. They're the ones yeah. that I, I would really go for. Fleur and Testo mm -hmm. um, are, the, are, are the big main brands. Um, again, you're looking at a T-series, T and I can't remember. I don't have all the bits and bobs um, uh, about it, but the, the T-series cameras on the on the Fleur go for the lower end of the T-series on the Fleur. Um, and, but most importantly, it doesn't really matter, uh, but the most important thing is looking at that 320, 240 as your basic sort of... Um, 32240 pixel thing because that, that's really it doesn't really matter what the what anything else is you just really want to have that or smaller a little smaller i do worry about those camera personally don't tell anybody else there's nobody else here i do worry for people who have put them on their little uh, on their iphones because they are useful for certain functions and i've noticed one or two things come up here they're useful for certain functions but remember, they are not going to give you the level of granularity that you require for uh, a lot of stuff. It gives you, I don't know, it's, it's rather like, I don't know, um, a really cheap, in the old days, they used to have those really cheap kind of long, thin little cameras, 110 cameras when I was a small kid. And you get a really cheap little sort of, it's like almost like a Polaroid and it's pretty fuzzy and stuff. That's the sort of thing. You don't really need that uh, if you're going to be professional work. Well, interestingly, you're saying that because that nicely leads on to a question from Ernest um, Godfrey, who was posing the question in terms of your views on apps and tools for your phone. Now, I think you've just made your view. Uh, obviously, you don't necessarily rate them, but thinking of the basic user here, because this is this 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 webinar is all about the basics and you know and mm -hmm. and, and people that are trying to get into it. Um. Is there a particular app you would recommend? And is there a particular um, um, a phone extension or thermal camera extension for a phone that, yes, you might not personally use it, but if you had to use it, this is what you would use? Um, I'm getting my head around. Are you talking about when you get your, you know, when you get your, your mobile phone, you're putting it on the top of the mobile yes, phone? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they're, they're the ones I'm talking about. I'm, I, I can get techie and offline because my uh my technical um my technical uh, colleague he has a number of those i haven't been brutally honest used them enough because i'm a little I, I look down my nose probably rudely at them but i because it's it's not in it's outside my spectrum because i'm using the bigger stuff all the time mm -hmm. but if somebody wants to talk to me directly about it um and they say what they want it for, then I'll be able to talk to my technical guy because it's, I think they're very restrictive. I think they're, they are a, a gimmick and I think they're a tool for you know, fun, rather like, you know, the, the cheap little drones that don't have GPS. You know, when we first started getting those, those toy drones and stuff, really difficult mm -hmm. to control and you don't, and after a while they get put into, into, a, into, a, um, into a draw and that's the last thing you want to do in a professional role. I would not recommend them for a professional role. Well, there you go, Ernest. Um, uh, I will pass on your details on to Anthony, and he'll check with his tech guys. But, you know, audience guys, um, we don't pretend to have that answers every time. You know, if you are using a do. mobile a mobile app or a mobile device attaches onto the phone and you rate it, then share it out. Yeah, please Tell do. It I don't know. That. Um, we're, always, we're always interested to hear from you guys. But here, yeah, very conscious of time, um, Anthony, we're really short, so if you can... Uh, for the next couple of questions, you can make your answers um, just as quick as possible and as short as possible. I'm going to go on to Joe. Joe Wilson has been really active with uh, lots of questions. My thanks, Joe. Um, his first question is, um, and it relates to the images that we've seen on screen. He's asking, isn't the images produced on the camera depending on atmospheric conditions, etc., i.e., the warmer areas could be indicative of dampness as water has a tendency to retain heat. I'm not quite sure what he means by that last bit, but I'm oh, hoping yeah. you do. 
Mm -hmm. well, okay, this is really interesting on roofs. I'll try to be as quick as possible. When you're doing, and hopefully, I'll, I'll talk about roofs, but you'll see how it fits into the other side. If you're looking at roofs, you want to be able to, you're looking at uh, energy flux. Um, when you're looking at a, a roof, you want to take an image uh, to find out where there's leaking in a roof on the outside at dawn or dusk, because the dry substrate will either heat up or cool down faster than the damp, because, of course, water retains heat. So it will be cooler or warmer, dependent on the time of day. So, for instance, if it's going to be in dawn, the substrate will warm up when the sun warms up and the, the, the damp area will warm up more slowly. So you'll see that the, damp, the water will be dark and the dry will be light, vice versa for the end of the day. So you take that inside and you'll be able to look at, look at it most the same sort of way. Now, we know that we heat up our, in central heating, we heat up our walls because that's where we're getting heat from. So the, the damp is generally coming from, if you've got a leak somewhere, it will generally be colder than the dry substrate because the, the wall has been heated up by the, uh, the the atmospheric temperature. Sorry, I was as quick as I could do it. No, 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 that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, do you know, I'm going to add another question, actually, that comes from Joe. Um, and I'm just actually just trying to find that question there. Yeah. Uh, my apologies here. Yes. So Joe was equally asking as well. One of the things that he comes across is for potentially those that are not so experienced with cameras, um, they take a picture, they look at a wall, they see that the bottom of the picture looks really cold at the base of the wall. And they take an assumption that there's potentially a source of darkness, i.e. potentially rising darkness there. Mm -hmm. How do surveyors avoid tripping up and potentially doing that mistake? And again, I suppose this comes from experience and okay. knowing that the tool is there to support you in your investigation diagnosis. Oh, God, I've turned on the thing. <laughs> OK, so what I generally do, first of all, if you don't know very much the differences and the subtleties and stuff the best thing to do have that and have that so what you're doing is you, you, what mm. i do is it's really really simple um is that you have a look at uh you basically have a look at the moisture at the top of the wall and have a look at the mo moisture at the bottom of the wall and all the way through up and down and then you take your camera and you can do this at the same time of course you do both of them and then you can actually start to see and you go oh actually it stayed pretty dry all the way through um there's a little bit, yeah, a little bit, but um, not too much. And then you know that it's just the natural uh, idea of the convection currents. Remember, the walls are going to be colder at the bottom than the top anyway, full stop, because of the convection currents in the building. Um, and so d don't uh, don't be befuddled. Also, generally speaking, it's, when you when when you start to look at this in so much more detail uh, and you get used to it, you can actually understand the, the shapes of the colours. Uh, I won't go into detail now because it's a long one. Right, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'll make sure I pass on that kind of question again to Anthony, guys, and um, certainly, um, hopefully, he can get back to you. I'm not going to promise anything. I'm going to ask one last question, and guys, I do apologise, we are just slightly running over. If you can bear with us another two minutes. But my last question is, and it comes from two individuals, Donna, I'm going to take your question, which is, do you recommend any training courses in order to get better knowledge? Now, I'm hoping you'll go nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and recommend the PCE training course here as well. But Funny any, you other, ones that. Generally, <laughs> any yeah. other ones generally out with that um, yes. can allow people to gain a, a little bit more knowledge about the equipment and maybe even about the reporting as well and reporting templates. And that maybe hopefully satisfies your question, Adam, as well. What would okay. be your recommendations? Really, really briefly, you've got two different types of uh, training. One is certification training, in which the, uh, the larger organisations do certification training, um, and they cost sort of um, a plus of a thousand pounds going onwards and upwards per individual. Okay, and then you get a nice little certificate. You, whether you need it or not, it depends on your job. Secondly, there's a um, the training courses that don't need certification, in which they you get your kit and you'll know how exactly how to use it, and it's great. Um, and there's a really good organisation. I believe it's called the uh, PCA. They do that. Uh, funnily enough, um, they do courses, and they they'll be doing courses, and we will be combining courses with them quite happily. Um, mm. And also, we do courses and we do workshops as well. So, um, dependent on how you want to do it, you know, DM 
either you know one or t'other of us um, and that will be great and by the way just i've got two and a half seconds thank you so much for all of these blimming questions i'm i am actually there are there are too many um and i don't know how we got to answer these and i'll leave it to andy to answer them but i would just like to say Thank you so much for that. That's brilliant. Really good. No worries, guys. Well, here, I apologize if we hadn't been able to ask your question. One thing I will do, and hopefully Anthony will be okay about this, is I'll pass on Anthony the questions we've not been able to yeah, ask over the webinar and uh, allow him to get back to you personally. If you are watching the recording of this, if you do want to, uh, if you do have a question, just email me at andy at property-care.org and I will pass it on. So, guys, just before we go, anyone looking for any kind of additional information, um, you heard Anthony put a nod to um, some um, info earlier on. I've just realised I've made a major typo on this particular slide, but let me kind of explain it out. Certainly the first one is about the new ISO um, thermal graphic standard, which is all about performance of buildings. Um, it looks into detection of heat, air, moisture regularities in buildings and infrared methods. Again, you heard Anthony talk about it earlier. For those, though, however, that are looking for more detail into conducting um, uh, successful thermographic surveys, um, RICS actually has some very, very useful information that I will share out very shortly. And also equally as well, if you are actually looking at thermal imaging reports, um, NHBC has a very, very useful resource and also templates. I'm just actually putting into the chat the now links to both uh, links to all three the ISO standard RICS page and also as well to the um, the NHBC um, standard as well. Now, if you are uh, just looking for more kind of journalist information, there are links to the PC website pages as well. You can go into professional pages, whole variety of information there technical documents, and lastly, the CPD library. Um, just moving on, if you are interested in learning a little bit more, you heard um, Anthony mention it earlier on, there is the PC, if you are looking towards more dampness-related stuff, there is a thermographic course that we do here. There is as well, if you are um, looking to understand a bit more about dampness, more generalist courses as our understanding dampness and condensation. Ideal if you're a housing association local authority, but there is also as well a flagship course in surveying timber and dampness in building, both online and classroom based. Um, just moving on, just uh, what's our next webinar? Next webinar will take place on the 29th of February. Uh, we're still working on the build at the moment time, still working on the title, but it should be dampness related. Just look out for information on our social channels and via our emails. Lastly, but not least, I apologise, we are running over time and many thanks for those that kind of stayed on a little bit longer. But I just want to say firstly, a big thank you to yourself, Anthony, for sharing your information. A big um, thank you to our audience that joined us this morning. We hope um, you got lots of insights and takeaways. And all it really allows me to say at the end is um, good morning and hopefully you have a lovely rest of the day. Thanks, everyone.